Greetings, beloved. Welcome to Narrowgate Channel. Another beautiful day our Father God has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I welcome those who just joined Narrowgate Channel. This is the last video in the Narrowgate Channel. Our Father is done, beloved. We serve a powerful God, the great I am, the one and only risen King, the only wise God. In him are hid all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom. Hallelujah, beloved. I am so excited. Glory be unto our Father. I have been saying, beloved, since the beginning of this year, 2024, that 2024 is my last year on YouTube. And today is my last day on YouTube. I am excited. I am happy. Praise be unto our Father. Psalm 103 verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I am rejoicing. I am excited, beloved. We serve a king. We serve a powerful God. Amazing, beloved. It has been five years of learning. What a mighty God we serve, beloved. I am in awe. I am so happy. I know some of you want me to continue, but my contract, my employment contract, beloved, it has come to an end. Our father is done, so there is nothing for me to share online. Praise the name of the Lord. He has taught us the entire Bible. What a powerful God we serve, beloved. Our father is amazing. So today I'm going to talk about myself, a bit about myself. This is the hardest video, beloved, because I don't want to talk about myself in the narrow gate channel. But I have promised that the last video in the channel will be about myself, a bit about myself. Praise the name of the Lord. And I will show you some throwback, beloved, memories in the channel. Glory to our Father. I'm sure it will make some of you smile. Hallelujah. And then I will spend some time appreciating all of you. Glory to our Father. And I think that's all I will do in this video. Praise the name of the Lord. I am so excited, beloved. I am really excited. It's amazing. We are done. Praise be unto our Father. Hallelujah. Like I said, beloved, it is hard for me to talk about myself in the channel, but I have to do it. Praise the name of the Lord. Good morning or afternoon, beloved. Wherever you are, welcome to this channel. This is a brand new channel. Good afternoon, my beloved sisters. I just want to quickly share with you what happened on the 11th of March. So excuse me. Praise the name of the living God. Good day, my beloved. This is another wonderful day that our Father God has made. Rejoicing and we are glad in it. Glory to his precious name. Hallelujah. We are marching forward in Jesus. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I welcome those who just joined Narrowgate Channel. Let us learn together. It's Operation Give Jesus Your 100%. 2022 is no retreat, no sorry. Together, it's Operation Give Jesus Your 100%. In 2023, beloved, the door of the ark is closing. The onus lies on individuals. If you want to be part of the ark, you have to run for your life. I welcome those who just joined Narrowgate Channel. Let us learn together. It's Operation Give Jesus Your 100%. In 2024, beloved, I'm wrapping up all the messages that our Father has given. What a journey, beloved. What a mighty God we serve. You know, today when I look at myself, I love the woman that I see. 
Our father has taught us everything, beloved. Everything. He taught us integrity. I don't know how many times, beloved, when I interact with the members of the public, they will end up asking me, which religion are you? Which faith? I don't even preach them the gospel, but just how I respond to them, how I live my life, that alone, beloved, it convicts them. It's amazing. I don't know how many times people stop me to ask me, where did you buy your clothes? It is so beautiful. Two days ago, I was with my daughter, Rachel. We were even smiling and laughing because this woman walked to where we were sitting and she said, you ladies look so beautiful. Where did you get these clothes? The reason why we were smiling and laughing is because every time I am with my daughter, Rachel, people always approach us about our dressing, complimenting how beautiful we look. And it's all our father's doing, beloved. The respect as well that people give you out there. Praise the name of the Lord. He has taught us a lot. Look at us today, beloved. We are not only covered physically, spiritually as well. Many believers out there are battling with the spirit of lust. They are running around, beloved, going to the prophets, men of God, to pray for them. Some of them are falling victims of false prophets because they are looking for help. Our father taught us, beloved, how to dress. And we have closed those doors, beloved. He has taught us to close the doors to the enemy. Even though the word of God says Satan has been disarmed or the devil has been disarmed on the cross, many believers are still binding. They're waking up to bind the devil. We use that time to praise our father because he taught us to close the doors, beloved. Today, when I look at the color black, I do not like it at all. It is dark. Our father taught us that we are the children of light. We must not walk in darkness. We must not cover ourselves with darkness. Black is the color of darkness. Praise the name of the Lord. He taught us the symbols and the patterns. Before we were wearing clothes with beast symbol, all these satanic symbols that they hide in clothes. There was a day I called Rachel. I said, come and see. What do you see in that bag? I said, pay attention. In the bag, they put fruits. You know, they cut different fruits. And you could see a skeleton. Scary one. So our father revealed all those lies of the enemy. As he has promised in the book of Luke chapter 12. Praise the name of the Lord. He has taught us, beloved, that we must wear plain clothes and it's beautiful we are obeying every day and we love it he taught us hygiene beloved today when i think how we were using toilet rolls before now when i think about it i said that is not clean and it has nothing to do with our eternity beloved because that's why we are called Christians. We are Christ-like. Praise the name of the Lord. So he has revealed to us, beloved, that this channel is for the elect Jews. So he taught us how the Jews 
or how the Hebrew women dress and the men, how they take care of themselves. Today, beloved, we are better. Praise the name of the Lord. We understand why the matters are an investment to the kingdom of darkness. Because we see metals everywhere, handbags, shoes, clothes, you know, metals are everywhere. Now we understand that it's a tracker in the kingdom of darkness. That's why we do not put on jewelries. Praise the name of the Lord. Our Father taught us a lot, beloved. We do not battle with the spirit of lust because we cover ourselves properly and we are beautiful fearfully and wonderfully made praise the name of the lord i can go on and on beloved our father taught us confession the word of god says in the book of proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 he that covereth his sins shall not prosper but whoso confesseth and forsaken them shall have mercy that's the word of God, beloved. So we confessed our sins. We did our restitution. Today we are better people. We owe nobody nothing but love. Glory to Jesus, beloved. We are happy people today. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve, beloved. Our Father revealed to us, beloved, where is true Israel that is written in the word of God. Today people are lost. They are looking at fake Israel. It does not even match history. It does not match the prophecy. That's why the day of the Lord will cut them off guard. And I just want to share something very interesting with you, beloved. In that video of um, mountains of Jerusalem, I showed you the big tree that is there in Venda. So if you remember in the book of Luke chapter 19, the story of Zacchaeus, when he wanted to see Jesus, the word of God says that he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. In my language, as I have shared, the tree is called Mubuyu. So in English, it is called a sycamore fig tree. I forgot to share that. Praise the name of the Lord. So beloved, even history testify itself that this is true Israel. Here in the country, they are always fighting for the land. And they will not get it, beloved, because it is written in the word of God. God said that when the children of Israel transgress, he will send people from far country who speak foreign language. They will take their land. That's why during the time of rebuilding the wall, they were crying. The children of Israel were crying. They said that we have become slaves in our own land. They took our fields, everything. It is still the same up to today. The land does not belong to its rightful owners. Praise the name of the Lord. So our father taught us a lot, beloved. And even when you look at that fake Israel, it's not a land that flows with milk and honey. No. History itself testify. The word of God says that those who call themselves Jews and they are lying, they are the synagogue of Satan. God will come and destroy them. Praise the name of the Lord. So, beloved, today we are better people. We are happy people. I am so happy, beloved. When I look back 
I smile. All the teachings of our Father, He has granted us knowledge of His word. Today, people are running up and down, beloved, looking for encounters, looking for heaven and hell experiences. And it is said what Satan is doing out there, beloved. It is said. After he has deceived people about grace, that you can do whatever you want, we are under grace. Now he has decided to preach holiness. He is running up and down, taking people, wherever he's taking them, they will come and say, I've been to heaven, I've been to hell. Now they say, oh, don't wear this, you know, this will take you to hell. And It is so sad, beloved. It is really sad. No matter how much you will tell the people, they don't want to listen. But it is written in the word of God, beloved. Jesus said it, that few, few, few find this way. Praise the name of the Lord. So, beloved, I am now going to talk a bit about myself. A little bit of my history. My name is Musandi Wanerwa Mondo. I am a third born of Patrick Aifeli Nerwa Mondo and Elizabeth Mukachewa Nerwa Mondo. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning, while I was preparing for this video, one of my cousins sent me a message and in that message there was an old picture of my father it is a history of our village back in Limpopo and I was emotional my father is late he passed on when I was 14 years old so I looked at that picture and I was emotional and I said that I'm grateful to our father because it brought so many memories and beloved really I am grateful I am grateful from my heart for everything that my parents have taught me. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I am grateful to our father for my parents. Though my father's departure was very early in our lives, but though he was not there physically, he made sure that we are well taken care of. And I really want to thank my mother for the woman she is. The whole foundation of who I am, beloved, it started at home. My parents taught us that there is God. Never in any time once have I ever gone to seek help anywhere else. Because my parents taught all of us that there is God in heaven. Whatever you need, whatever you want, you go on your knees. Praise the name of the Lord. And I am grateful. I am grateful for that. It was a great foundation that shaped me all through my life up until today praise the name of the lord my father was very passionate about education so when we were growing up he asked me and my sister what do we want to do career wise and i said that i want to work at the bank i always loved to work with money finances and my father made sure that I go to a commercial high school. He did everything. My sister wanted to go 
uh, she wanted medicine route. So she went to a science school and I went to a commercial, the school that measure with accountancy, business economics. Our father made sure that he did all that. All we had to do was to show up. Praise the name of the Lord. So he passed on while I was in high school. I am a third born of six children. After I finished my high school, I went to tertiary in KwaZulu Natal. So back home, while I was still in high school, like I said, our parents taught us about God when we were still very young. We used to go to church. And it will happen, beloved, that we will go for the youth conferences. Somehow I will be given an opportunity to preach. And whenever I am sharing the word of God, beloved, I will experience this presence that I couldn't explain. And this presence will take over. I will feel that it was not me who was sharing the gospel. All the time, whenever it's my turn to preach. And people will be blessed. Then other parish, you know, we used to call it parish. They will say, oh no, come preach. You know, during our youth service, come and preach. We have heard about your preaching. It wasn't me who was preaching. It's hard for me to explain. Whenever I will take the word of God and stand in front, you know, there will be this strong force that will take over. And I will feel within me that I am shaking all the time. Praise the name of the Lord. I remember when I left home to go to KwaZulu Natal to go to college. I took my King James Bible. My father had a bookcase in the living room. Like I said, he was passionate about education. I learned uh, reading the novels from my father. He loved reading a lot. So there were lots of books at home. So I opened the book cupboard and I found King James Bible. There were lots of Bibles there. I took King James. I loved it from day one. And I traveled with it. Opposite the college residence, there was a church. I went there a couple of Sundays, but I felt, you know, they didn't have what I was looking for. From there, I forgot about church, you know, being excited from home. You know, I focused on friends and books. And after three years, again, I felt I was missing something in my life. I started to look for a church. I remember I found one church and uh, I liked it. I attended. But again, after, you know, a few Sundays, I felt that, you know, they don't have what I am looking for. So again, I forgot about church. So when I finished college, I was looking for a job. Then I started being serious with God. I started seeking the Lord. I remember I joined one church. I was invited by a brother. And I used to go to that church during the week services. And I would go on Sunday as well. So one day I looked at that church. It was so dirty. I had nothing to offer. I was looking for a job at that time. So I made it a point that it's better I come here and clean the church. This church is dirty. So I used to wake up very early in the morning, go to the church, 
and clean the church and rush back home. I'll go take a bath and go back to the church. I was doing it like that all the time. So December time, I traveled back home. I was very excited about uh, the gospel that I was being taught in that church. I remember the pastor was a Nigerian. Then I started calling my people back at home that I'm coming back home. And when I come back, you know, you must call all the people who are sick. Whoever has a problem, you must all come. So I went home and indeed, you know, I started a fellowship in the evening. I was praying for the people. Every day when I wake up, I'll be told, oh, there's someone outside who needs prayer. And our father was faithful, beloved. He was healing all those people. And I introduced the gospel to my younger siblings. You know, we used to pray every night. It was so wonderful. I was just on fire. And I remember I went back, you know, I went back again because I wanted to look for employment. And I remember when I go to clean the church, you know, at times I will stand in front with the Bible practicing, uh, like practicing preaching. Because I used to have dreams seeing myself preaching to many people. So I will stand there alone practicing. So after the holidays, I went back now to KwaZulu Natal to look for a job and I went back to the church. So when I get into the church, it was dirty because I left. And the man of God asked me, are you the one who has been cleaning the church? Because that Sunday, I went very early in the morning, I cleaned the church and I went home, I changed, then I came back to attend the service. So he asked me, I said, yes. And he said to me, as you have been cleaning the church, God will be cleaning your life. And, you know, I took that literally. I continued to do that. And slowly, you know, I was finding all the things that I've been doing boring, like being with friends, going up and down, you know. I started saying, no, I, I want to be home because I want to go to the church early to clean the church, you know. And once you start to do that, your friends find you boring and they will leave you behind. And to me, it was okay. So it continued like that. I did not get the job. So I continued praying. I remember one day I decided to go into a fast with one sister i was praying asking for a job i remember we used to wake up at midnight to pray on the last day of the fast while we were praying i saw a vision very clear i was shown three children two boys and a girl and a voice said into my spirit that I'm going to have three children, two boys and a girl. I was 23 years at that time. And on that day, that very same day, the last day of our fast, I knew that I was going to get a job. I remember in the morning I took my bath and I said... Holy Spirit, please guide me to where you want me to be. And indeed, I just started working. I continued working. I did not know where I was going until I reached a company called Transnet. Those who are in South Africa will know it. I went there. And I introduced myself. And I remember that very same day, they said to me, it is hot. I must come after two weeks. It is hot. They will take me back home. So while they were taking me back home, they gave me a tour around the sheds. And they said to me, yes, we are giving you a tour because this is the company you'll be working for. 
And in my heart, I just said, Amen. I was so excited because I knew when I left home that day that Father is going to give me a job. By then I was saying, God, praise the name of the Lord. And indeed, beloved, that was the company that I worked for, for more than 17 years. Praise the name of the Lord. I remember the day I was hired, I was told that if you want to study, the sky is the limit, 100% bursary. So I was so excited. Praise the name of the Lord. So like I said, beloved, our father, my earthly father, he asked me and my sister, what is it that we want to do? when we grow up career wise. And I said, I want to work in the bank. I want to you know, work with finances. Though I didn't end up in the bank, but I ended up in a parastatal company and I worked in their finance department. I lived my dream. When I was growing up, I used to say that I want to have an apartment by the beach front. When I wake up in the morning, I want to open the curtains and see the sea. And it was like that. I got a good job, beloved. It was wonderful. And our father, our heavenly father gave me this job. I think after two months or so, I was just sharing the word of God in that very same company. And the two men that assisted me the first day I arrived in the organization, they said to me, the day that you came in here, we were shocked. They said to me, we didn't know whether it was some force or whatever it is, but you carried some presence that we couldn't explain. He said, that's why we took you back home. And we said it was hot. There was something within us that was telling us that we must assist you. Now that you are talking about God, we understand. I just smiled. Praise the name of the Lord. I started lunch hour fellowship at work. During lunchtime, we used to go right on top of the building and pray. It was amazing. Every lunch hour, we will go there and pray. I remember one of the managers who was from another religion he went to complain to senior management and they said to him we need prayers how can we stop prayers we need prayers and we were so excited we continued beloved we continued every lunch hour we will go and pray at some days we will organize all night prayer it was amazing. And at that time, you know, I didn't have any children. It was nice. It was amazing. So I grew in the organization. I moved from uh, port operations. I moved to port authority. And they, I enjoyed as well. I did well. I excelled. Beloved, I was managing the fixed assets that were sitting in billions. It was exciting. It was growth for me. And I gave my all. Praise the name of the Lord. In 2011, I moved from KwaZulu Natal to Cape Town. I got a job in Cape Town. I was excited about change because I spent too much time in KwaZulu Natal. I was dreaming in, in Zulu. <laughs> Then I moved uh, to Cape Town, you know, when I uh, resumed work in Cape Town, it wasn't as much as the work I had in Deben. So I had more time to spend with the children, which was one of the reasons why I took the job. The job in Deben was quite demanding, but I grew a lot as a person, but I was spending too much time at work than with the children. Praise the name of the Lord. So moving to Cape Town was great. You know, the job wasn't as demanding. 
So I was nominated as a chair lady of the Women's Forum and the Employment Equity. So that gave me an opportunity to work with women a lot and I really loved it. Praise the name of the Lord. So as the years went by, you know, I was no longer excited about the finance work anymore. I felt that I've been there, I've done it. I have nothing more to give, you know, and I felt I was not receiving anything except my salary at the end of the month. But, I, you know, I felt like I have reached the maximum. I remember they had management program for women and uh, it was for two years or two and a half years. I was part of it. It was exciting. You know, we used to travel every month to go attend the lectures. It was wonderful. It kept me busy. But then again, I was thinking, what's going to happen when I finish this? So I realized that working with women as a chairperson of the Women's Forum, it fulfilled me more. You know, I enjoyed it a lot. So I decided I want to study psychology. That's when I started doing my applications. I was so excited and, you know, they responded. They said to me, since you are a graduate, we'll just give you a few courses and then you can start doing your honors program. I was so excited, really. Uh, that was in 2016. Each and every year in our organization, beloved, of 56,000 people and plus, that was then, I don't know now, they will nominate some employee that represent the culture charter in terms of performance, you know, everything, like the entire culture charter values, and they will honor them. So in 2016, I was nominated and I became top. I was so excited. I kept this magazine to show you. You can see me sitting down there. Yes, that was in 2016 in December. Again, this was our monthly magazine there. I don't know if they still have it. You can see they profile me there. That's me. That was in 2016, beloved, at the end of 2016. I felt so honored. That was one of the most beautiful days in my life, you know. To be nominated throughout, I felt so honored. You know, I felt all my hard work in the organization was paid off. Hallelujah. I really felt so happy. So beginning of 2017, I was excited to start my studies of psychology. It was something completely different from finance. Remember I said that I felt like I reached a brick wall, you know, with finance. Nothing was challenging me, you know, it was the same processes every month. It was really boring, you know. Finance is a very lonely field. You work with figures, you work late, you know that each and every month you have to have two or three days of working late when you're doing your reports and financial year end is worse, you know. So I felt I've been doing it, you know, for over 17 years. I want to be interacting with people. You know, I felt like there is something more I can give to the people. And that's what motivated me to study psychology. I wanted to help people. I wanted to go back to my village and you know, tell lots of stories that are not told. So I had that passion. Beginning of 2017, I was driving to work that morning. So I indicated to turn into the work premises. 
just before I turned, while I was waiting for the traffic to clear, a voice said unto me in my head, you are not going to travel this route for long. I was so shocked. Who said that to me and why? I remember when I get to the office, I told my colleagues that, you know, there's a voice that said to me, I won't be traveling this route for long. I am surprised because I'm not looking for a job and I'm going to start my studies. How is that possible? You know, if you look for a new job, you have to work hard and prove yourself. I don't have that time. I want to be studying. So I was surprised when I get home, I shared as well that, you know, to my surprise, there was a voice that said to me, I won't be traveling this route for long. I don't know why I'm not looking for a job, you know, and indeed in May, beginning of May was my last day in that organization. So they decided to offer packages. I was so excited about it and I applied because I felt that, okay, then I have to focus on my studies. This is awesome. And I remember they said that they are going to approve those who are closer to pension. So they just won't approve anyone. And I remember some people were saying, no, let's write a motivation. I said, no, I'm not writing any motivation. Me, I am going. I know. I know that I am going. I know my time in this organization is over. I don't know why I was saying that, but I have totally forgotten about that voice when it happened. So indeed they approved. I left the organization. My last day was on the 30th of April. I left the organization to focus on my studies. So I said that I will do my honors and then I will do my masters, you know, and I will focus on what I want to do. So I was excited and I was more happy just to be a mother full time to my children since I have been working a lot. I have put lots of hours for that organization, which I do not regret, beloved, because I have gained a lot as well. You know, uh, the job really took care of me and my family. So I really cannot complain. I loved that organization. And that organization, I was given that job, beloved, by our Heavenly Father. I remember that day, and I kept saying it everywhere that, me, it is God who brought me into this organization. Like I said, the last day of our fast, I was taken, I was led, I was just walking until I get into this organization and they hired me. Nobody told me about it or I didn't even know anybody. So our father in heaven gave me that job, beloved. And I enjoyed it a lot. I loved the organization. They paid well, you know, they took care of me. Glory to Jesus. So I left very happy in 2017. I totally forgot about the voice. So now beginning of 2019, I remember there was a day I was coming from refilling the water. You know, the water, there's a place where we buy drinking water. They clean the water. Because in Cape Town, there was shortage of water. It was no longer safe to drink the water from the tap. So that day, I was knocked by a car out of the blue, you know. I remember looking. The next thing, the car hit me. Something happened. When that car hit me, I was lifted, literally. I was lifted up and I was placed few steps ahead, the car stopped and I was placed down nicely. Now I understand because now I have experienced those 
spiritual experiences a lot. But when it happened, I was shocked. I was shaking. I got inside my car. I get home. I told my children. I said, something happened today. You know, who knows? I could have been dead. I said, I was lifted. Literally, I was lifted up. I was lifted. I don't know who lifted me. But I felt being lifted and I was placed a few meters ahead. And the person who was driving the car was shocked and shaking as well. It was a lady. So from that day, I said, no, you know what? I'm going back to church. I've always been part of church, you know. And whenever I go to the church, I will be part of the leadership. It has been like that throughout my life. But, you know, my studies have been keeping me so busy. So I said that this year I'm going to be more serious with church. I will be more dedicated. I will make more time, you know, and it happened like that. I became, you know, more involved again in church because I told them that I was taking a short break. Like I won't be as full time as I was. But after that happened, I said, no, you know, a person can die anytime. And I feel like my relationship with the Lord is not strong. That was in 2019. It continued like that. I remember from September, I started feeling so empty inside. I was unhappy. Nothing could make me happy. Nothing. I started crying, going on my knees. You know, I looked at my life. I, I felt there's nothing that really fulfills me. You know, I was not happy. I started repenting. I started crying to God, you know. I remember I called all my friends and I told them that I'm going to change. I want to seek God more. And they were surprised. They said, but you do go to church. I said, no, I want more. You know, I know what I'm looking for. So I told my family the same thing. That, you know what? I want to seek the Lord. I feel like there's something I'm looking for. And this is the same thing that I've been looking for when I moved or when I go to the college in KwaZulu-Natal, you know, when I was looking for churches. I couldn't get the church. I kept changing churches and I will stay there for a while and, you know, I will feel like I'm not growing, you know. I just couldn't get what I was looking for. Then I will stop going to church until again, I start again. It has been like that. So now I was no longer hungry for churches. I just went on my knees. Like I am seeking God myself. That was, it started in September. And October, I remember now I was just now seriously every day I'm crying to God. I am repenting, you know, I am changing my dressing. You know, I was just crying for mercy. And on the 6th of November, 2019, that's when I had my first encounter with the Lord. From there, beloved, that's where my journey started. Every time when I go to bed, it is dreams, visions, our father started dealing with me, you know, revealing all my deeds, my sins, everything, my dressing. That's where the struggle of dressing started from that 2019. It was on the 6th, on the 7th, the following day, it started immediately. It continued the struggle for clothes, 20. 20, you know, the journey, those who have been there for long, like Sister Marty, you know, 2020, 2021, only in 2022, that is when our father 
gave at least a clear direction of what kind of dressing is he looking for. And he used all that time, beloved, to change me, to change the inner man. Praise the name of the Lord. The rest, you know, beloved, it has been the journey in the channel. Praise the name of the Lord. It was only in 2020, it was 2020, that I remembered, okay, so that voice that I had when I was going to work, that I won't be traveling this journey, it was our father. That's when I remembered. And then, you know, it was in 2020, beginning of 2020, I was told it wasn't our father, it was the angel of our father. I was told that God wants to use me and I was shown so many things. Praise the name of the Lord. And I know, beloved, that many people were surprised once when I said a female angel. Our father has female angels. Yes. There are only three people who gives me messages. It's our father, there's a female angel, and the male angel. Those are the three people from the beginning of this journey up until now. That gives me messages. And the female angel is the one I move with everywhere I go. They are warriors. I have seen a lot in the spirit. Beloved, narrow gate channel is for the angels of God. All of you, once we are transformed, you will remember the life that we have been living before we came here on earth. Praise the name of the Lord. So that is a bit of my history, beloved. It is only later when I even remembered that even my children, I was shown when I was 23 years. I had my first born when I was 29. So I was shown much earlier that I'm going to have two boys and a girl, but I totally forgot just like the voice that said to me, I won't be traveling for long. You know, I totally forgot. So I am so happy that our father found me, beloved. I am so happy that he took me through this journey. I am honored to be his servant. I am honored to work for our father. You know, it has changed me in so many ways. Praise the name of the Lord. I think I have covered everything, beloved, I wanted to say about myself. And now I want to use this opportunity to appreciate all of you, beloved, for walking this journey with me. Praise the name of our Father. I know that I have met many people, beloved, online, through this journey, you know, some they come and go, some they went and they came back, you know, so many things happened. But we give our father all the glory because in his word, he said, all that are his, he will not lose none. So I don't stress myself about those who come and go. Before I used to sit and cry, you know, I will suck. For a few days, I'm sad, I'm hurt, you know, because, you know, you build relationships, you know, you get closer to people. And the next thing you send the messages, you realize that they have blocked you, you know, there's no goodbye. Yeah, it has been quite a journey, beloved. I remember my friend, Marty. Marty, she joined Narrowgate channel very early. I remember sending her the message very soon after the channel was opened. And Marty has been, you know, working in this journey with me throughout, even up until today. 
there are very few people that I know from 2020. I know some of you, maybe you joined the Narrow Gate channel in 2020, but I get to know you personally after that. But yes, I know Marty is among those people that stayed from the very start of this channel. Glory to our Father. We worked together in that management program I told you about. We started, we were few women, but they dropped and it was only Marty and me. And I used to tell her all my dreams of what I want to do, how I want to, you know, change lives. <laughs> and now we joke about it that, you know, little did I know that I was talking about the work of our father, hallelujah. I remember one day we were working together and one guy came to us and said, are you Jews? <laughs> because of our dressing, praise the name of the Lord. And yes, we are Jews. So Marty, by a donkey, by a donkey, my friend, hallelujah. So beloved, I just want to use this opportunity to thank all of you, you know, for your love, for your support for being there. I know it hasn't been easy. You know, our father has been training us. The old man had to die, you know, and <laughs> remember the journey of food cutting, you know, throwing all those abominable items, our families being angry at us, you know, and father now, all of a sudden, all the restrictions are off. You know, in that throwback, I selected the videos uh, that were controversial. The, the video of the Bride of Christ being one woman. My goodness, <laughs> I cannot forget that. Many people ran away from the channel. And the other video was the one of uh, the restrictions, you know, people were saying so many things, but yo, yeah, it has been a journey, beloved. Today we can look back and smile. We are grateful because our father taught us a lot. We are better people. It's not easy, beloved, to be an elect of our father. It comes with lots of responsibilities, discipline, dedication, you know, so, and our father will deal with you if you are not being obedient. I know it's appealing to many people, but the actual living, beloved, it is serious. Our father does not play games, you know, because he is raising soldiers. We're going to be fighting the spirits, the demons. I'm sure some of you, you have seen in your visions and dreams, it will be war out there. So he had to strengthen his hand on us. And, you know, today I'm happy. I'm happy. You know, I look back and I smile. Glory be unto his holy and precious name. So thank you, beloved, you know, for walking this journey with me. You know, many left, but we are all here, beloved. And our father made sure of that. And I want to thank those who have been supporting our father's work financially. Praise be unto our father, beloved. I am so grateful. And I know that our father placed you there for that purpose and reason. Praise the name of the Lord. And I know that he will continue to bless you, not only in this earth, but even in our next life. Glory be unto his holy and precious name. I thank you for your obedience. Hallelujah. Beloved, I just want to greet you wherever you are. Some of you, I'm not sure which country you are in. But I want to say thank you to Sister Togo. Hello, my sister in Belgium. I remember that very first email. It has been a beautiful journey. I thank you. I thank you. And I'm grateful for everything. You are such a blessing. God bless you. And I am going to move to America. I want to say thank you to Sister Olamide. God bless you and your 
children and your husband. Hallelujah. It has been great, you know, walking this journey with you. I thank our father, you know, who brought us all together. Sister Shitera, I just want to say thank you to you and your family. God bless you. I want to say thank you, Sister Petrina. God bless you with your girls and your husband. And uh, Sister Cherise, it has been wonderful knowing you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Brother Thomas, thank you so much. I remember that first email as well. God bless you and your family. Thank you for everything. Hallelujah. I am so grateful, beloved, that we all have been part of this journey. And in St. Lucia, Sister Verilyn, God bless you. Thank you for all the encouragement, you know. Uh, I am so grateful, you know. God bless you and Sister Debbie with you that side. Thank you. And Ireland, Sister Virginia and Sister Ruta, God bless you, my sisters. Thank you for everything. You know, it has been a great journey. Hallelujah. We have learned. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love you, my beautiful sisters. And I will move to Nigeria. I want to say thank you to Sister Deborah. God bless you, my sister. And say hello to mom. It has been wonderful in this journey. I have been practicing calling your name, but I, I don't think I was getting it right. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Judah. Hallelujah. Thank you for everything. You know, our father is faithful. He carried us up until this far. Hallelujah. God bless you. And uh, Sister Rosemary, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. I am so blessed, beloved. And Sister Yetunde, God bless you. Thank you. Let us continue to look to our father for everything. I am so grateful that he brought all of you, beloved, hallelujah, Sister Faith, I just want to say thank you, Sister Adekai, I want to say thank you, I love you so much, my beautiful sisters and my brother there in Nigeria, hallelujah, let us continue to look to our Father, he's coming for us very soon, hallelujah, and I want to move to Ghana, Sister Michelle, I love you, my sister, I love you, hallelujah, God bless you, I send you a big hug, glory to our father who has brought us all together i am so grateful some of you i'm not sure which country you are in like i said like uh, sister Leticia, i just want to say thank you for everything i love you my sister and i want to say thank you to sister patience as well god bless you my sister lots of love to you and the family that side and again, Sister Livinia, I'm not sure where you are, but I just want to say thank you and God bless you. Hallelujah. And I want to move to Tanzania. I know Brother Gilbert in Tanzania. God bless you, my brother. Thank you for being part of the journey. Hallelujah. And in Grenada, I want to say thank you to Sister Gloria. God bless you and the family. Hallelujah. I love you so much. Hallelujah. And I will move to Uganda. Thank you, Sister Rosemary, for everything. Thank you. I appreciate you. Hallelujah. I love you so much. God bless you and the family there in Uganda. And in Botswana, my daughter, Gabi, hallelujah. God bless you and all my grandchildren. I love you so much. And in Swaziland, Brother Maynard, I just want to say thank you to you and your family. God bless you. And Sister Kumbuzile, you and your son, God bless you. Thank you for walking this journey with us. Hallelujah. I love you so much. God bless you. And I want to move to Zimbabwe, Sister Cleopatra. Thank you, my daughter. I love you so much. In Zambia, yes, not. Thank you, daughter. God bless you. It has been so nice knowing you. Hallelujah. Sister Shirley, I want to say thank you as well. I'm not sure which country you are. 
and i want to say thank you to sister Felomina as well god bless you hallelujah and beloved i want to thank my beautiful sisters who assisted me in our father's vineyard sister Deepa in india sister hanti bali here in south africa sister benice here in south africa sister benign thank you so much god bless you my beautiful sisters i really appreciate all the assistance you know i really appreciate from my heart and i know you were doing it with all of your heart god bless you my beautiful sisters it has really been wonderful you know you have made this journey so much easier in so many ways i really really appreciate all your help hallelujah and i'm gonna come now to south africa you know i want to say thank you to my friend and my sister in the lord sister marty thank you so much my friend for everything i really appreciate you god bless you and give oma a hug from me hallelujah i want to say thank you to sister constance and her daughter or our daughter anastasia thank you so much for all the encouragement you know i really appreciate our father has been using you a lot to encourage me you know you and Sister Verilyn, oh my goodness, you know, you just sent me a message at the right time. And I really appreciate because, you know, our father has already worked all this. You know, we are living a predestined life. So father has placed you there for a purpose and you have been encouraging me a lot. And I know, beloved, that you, all of you have been praying for me and your prayers have been really carrying me. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to say thank you to Sister Wusisiwe. I love you, my sister. Thank you so much. I remember as well that very first email from you. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you to Brother Michael. You know, Brother Michael, wherever you see, anywhere they are talking about the Narrow Gate Channel, Michael will be there fighting. <laughs> He will be there fighting for our father's work, you know, together with my daughter, Nontobeko. Oh, you have been such a great strength in my life, you know. I really thank our father for two of you, for everything, you know. You really have been great. And I thank you so much for the prayers, for everything. God bless you, and I love you so much. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you to Sister Komisani and our daughter Tsagani. Oh, thank you so much. Nimiranza ngopu. Shikwembu shimika tekise na kenta. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. I love you so much. I want to say thank you to Sister Rian. God bless you and the boys. Brother T. Rose, thank you for the encouragement. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you to Brother Senzo, Brother Sizwe, Simpiwe. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hey, I want to say thank you to Libuani Namoraro. Muzimwani Patuche Zeva Ratwanga. Dear Libua Gambiru Yanga Yote. Muzimumbo Ritanga Nisa. Hey, Gondi Kulibu Wesa. Dini Funa Gambiru Yanga Yote. Thank you, my beautiful sister Libuani and sister Moraro. I love you so much. Amen. I want to say thank you to Sister Ntavi saying I love you so much, my sister. God bless you and all the children. Sister Primrose, God bless you, my sister. Hallelujah. I thank you so much. I remember right from 2021, and I thank our Father for carrying us throughout. Hallelujah. God bless you. I want to say thank you to Sister Lorraine. God bless you and give the baby a kiss for me. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you to our sister Zilungile. God bless you, Siswami. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you to Sister Cindy. God bless you. Hallelujah. And Sister Esther as well. I'm not sure 
where you are, which country, and all of you, beloved. Like I said, some of you is because I see your names quite often and it's easy to remember. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. It has been a journey. I love you, all of you. You know, you have made this journey much easier. Praise the name of the Lord. I remember I used to say those days when people were leaving the channel, I used to say that even if there are two people, I will still continue. But you, beloved, you stayed, which I was right, beloved, because really the work of our Father had to be done, irrespective of who is watching and who is not watching. Only him knows that. Mine is to obey. But you, beloved, our Father has placed you there throughout to be a support for his work. And I appreciate all of you. I really love you from the bottom of my heart. You know, really, it has been wonderful. Personally, really, I am tired. I am grateful for this season that the work is over and time is up, beloved. Like I said, please do not panic. Wait for our Father wherever you are. Time is up. It is time for the prophecies to be fulfilled. The wedding is going to happen any time from now. What I'm saying is our Father is coming any time from now. Like from tonight. This is the last video. So we are done with the work. So expect our Father any time. Any time from this last video, expect our father. There's absolutely nothing that you have to panic about. Praise the name of the Lord. Everything is there. I have shared everything. So you must just remember, beloved, that our father warned us many times about deception. And I have said, and I'm saying it again, beware of those heaven and hell experiences. They are pushing you further away from the truth. Please run away. Everything we need to know, our Father has taught us. Praise the name of the Lord. So, beloved, I will end it here. And to the mockers and scoffers, as I have promised that when I'm done, I will let you know, I am done. And our Father is coming for us. And we shall see who will laugh last. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I will see you all at the wedding. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus.